The Pythagorean theorem. Surprisingly, I'm not going to do any examples of the Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to do any actual calculations for the entire video. And the reason for that is because at this point, you've probably already done like 200, 300, maybe even 400 different examples of the Pythagorean theorem. So those types of calculations, they're all pretty repetitive. There's not much of a, a difference. You're either looking for a hypotenuse or a leg length. And that's pretty much all it is. So we're not gonna waste any time doing that stuff. What we are gonna do is look at a proof for the Pythagorean theorem. All right, now fun fact at the beginning though, we call this the Pythagorean theorem. We call it the Pythagorean theorem, but the reason that it is called the Pythagorean theorem is because the guy who proved that this was true, the first person who wrote a proof for the Pythagorean theorem was Pythagoras. So it becomes named after him. However, way, way, way beyond his time, the ancient Egyptians used the Pythagorean theorem. And the way that they used it was to create right triangles. So they figured out that there are certain values, which we actually call Pythagorean triples, that work for this equation. They found that they worked and then they used pieces of rope that were tied off to certain lengths. And when they held them in a certain way, they would automatically create right triangles. And for building things in agriculture, they turned out to be pretty darn useful to be able to create right triangles. So here's what it says, given a right triangle, which means that you have a right angle there. If you take the leg lengths and you square those values, you, you take the length of this and you square it, you take the length of this one and you square it, and then you add them together, it will be equivalent to the hypotenuse squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. The sum of the squares of the legs is gonna equal the square of the hypotenuse. All right, so what we're gonna do is look at a proof for this, but our proof is not gonna be a two column proof which I think will be a little bit more exciting. This is actually gonna be a picture proof that we're gonna do. All right, now first, sort of think about like when you square numbers, what it means as far as geometry. When you square something, you could be talking about the area of a square. Hence, that's why we call it squared. We do that. So if I were to have a picture of a right triangle like this over here and build squares off of each of those sides, what we are actually looking at is Let's say that that had a length of A, that has a B, and that has a C. What we're looking at is that this area, A by A, A squared, plus this area, B squared, is going to equal the area that we have in this spot. It's going to equal that. Of course, as you look at the pictures, there isn't anything obvious that tells us that, okay, if I take these two different areas and I add it, that it's supposed to create that one. However, the picture proof that I'm gonna demonstrate here in a minute is gonna come back to that idea that a little square, A by A, and a medium square, B by B, is going to be the same thing as the big square, C by C. All right, so I'm gonna be doing a picture proof for this, which is gonna begin with uh, these two squares that I have here. In addition to that, I'm gonna have these, uh, these green squares, which are a perfect match to that. Okay, now I'm gonna take this one and just move it to the side focus my attention here. What I want to do first is divide the square into two parts. I'm going to divide it vertically here, but when I do it, I don't want to divide it like right down the middle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just take a straight edge, which would be a ruler here, and go ahead and just draw a line there. Okay, so I'm breaking it into two pieces, but not breaking it into like equal size parts. Okay, and now I'm going to rotate it. Let's do this way. All right, I'm going to rotate it this way go ahead and break it exactly the same way. Okay, so it is important that the width of this is gonna be equal to the width of that. And now what I'm gonna do is add in some right triangles. Okay, so those right triangles, I'm gonna place one of them here, actually two of them, I'm gonna draw a diagonal, which will give me two right triangles, which I'll be able to call, um, or what I'll do is use the letters A, B, C, because uh, Pythagorean theorem, you'll, you'll recognize these a little bit better later on. Okay, and in addition to labeling this, so the short leg A got the uh, long leg B, the hypotenuse C. In addition to that, I'm gonna go ahead and label that one as well. All right, now the bottom part, I'm gonna divide that as well. I'm gonna divide it to match up to that, which means I wanna divide it this way, just so that that triangle has the same positioning that the other one does. All right, and again, I got ABC, 
I got A, I got B, and I got C. All right, now the other one, the other square that I got, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'll go ahead and just take care of that and then uh, let you see that one when it's done. All right, so here they are both uh, completed. They're identical to each other. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take that, uh, that first one and I'm gonna start to cut it up. Okay, but I'm not gonna completely cut it. Okay, so that piece I'm gonna end up discarding. I'm gonna keep that part that had everything labeled in it. And then I'm gonna keep this piece. Okay, I'm gonna keep that piece. And what I'm gonna do is glue them into the white box exactly as they were when I originally had created them. All right. Now from the first picture, um, really what my attention is gonna go to here is the absent space that we have. Okay, so we have this big box that has a certain area that goes along with it. Okay, when I take out these pieces, I've actually removed some of the area. But it's sort of easy to describe what that area is because if you look at the side measurements that I have for them, this would be B by B, which means you have a square here. This is actually a square, and the area of that would be B squared, okay? And then the area of this one would be A by A, so we get, we get A squared, okay? So we're thinking Pythagorean theorem. The absence space that I have here is A squared plus B squared. All right, now for the other one, for that, what I wanna do is demonstrate that if I keep these two pieces, if I keep these two pieces, which are identical to those pieces, that the absence space in here would be equivalent to that. But I want to position it in a different way so that the absence space is actually C squared. I've got the A squared and the B squared together. If I can show it's the same thing as C squared here, that would prove Pythagorean theorem because the A, the B, and the C are coming from right triangles. All right, so to do that, what I need to do is cut that apart. I need the C's on the edge. All right, so somehow what I need to do is create a square, that's C by C. All right, now remember, each of these, each of these are gonna be right angles, which means I can tuck them into the corners pretty nicely. I can put one right there and I can put one right here, and I can put one here, and I can put one right there. And in that absent space, I create a square, which is C by C, and has an area of C squared. So if the two big squares were the same size to begin with, the white space that we have in the background, that absent space, would have to be the same, even though the pictures look a little bit different. So we can come to the conclusion here that the A squared area plus the B squared area is equal to the C squared area. And that is a picture proof for the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so the only other thing that I wanna cover in the video is Pythagorean triples. Pythagorean triples are gonna be whole values that work perfectly for the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, now most of the time when you're like actually applying Pythagorean theorem, you, you might be looking for a hypotenuse. Let's just say that's the case. If you're looking for a hypotenuse and you've got whole values for the leg lengths, when you square those and you add them together, the likelihood that the square root of that answer is gonna be whole value is fairly slow. Most often you're gonna get decimal answers. But there are select sets of numbers that work perfect, like three, four, five. That would be the most basic triple. Three squared is nine, four squared is 16, and five squared is 25, and if we take nine, plus 16, you get 25. They work out perfectly together. In addition to that, you can look at 5, 12, 13. 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, and 13 squared is 169. For that, I might need to just type it in for you. Okay, so, all right, so 5 squared is gonna be 25. 12 squared is gonna be 144, and if I add those together, I get 169, and then 
13 squared is exactly 169. Okay, these are triples because they're whole values that work perfectly. Even these work. All right, we could do seven squared plus 24 squared gives you 625, which is 25 squared. Same thing here. You'd have 12 squared plus 35 squared, which is gonna equal 37 squared. These are triples. In addition to the fact that these pop up occasionally, usually because we want the numbers to work out really good, what you might also see are scale factors of these. All right, so three, four, five, if you were just to double all the numbers, you would get six, eight, and 10, which is also gonna work as a triple. Six squared is 36, eight squared is 64, and if you add those together, you'll get 100, which is 10 squared. So for all of these, you can even consider the multiples of them as triples. So we could multiply by three as well. We would get uh, nine, we get 12 and 15, and that'll work. You could multiply by four, you get 12, 16, and 20. That works, even times five. All right, and of course, you can multiply by anything you want. You can multiply these by 11. You won't actually see that happen very often, but um, these, these are a little bit more likely that they will pop up in problems. At some point, though, the numbers just get a bit too large. All right, for these, if we double them, okay, so if we double them, we're already gonna be at 10, 24, and 26. So usually, uh, for that triple, we don't usually see like the scale factor two or three. Uh, that would give you 15, 36, and uh, 39. Okay, but then beyond that point, there the numbers are probably gonna get like a bit large. So to be honest, I really wouldn't worry about like the larger scale factors of these. All right, and then for these two, maybe doubled, 14, uh, 48, 50, that might pop up. But then beyond that point, I really wouldn't expect that they'll pop up very often. Um, this, I would be really hesitant to see uh, to ever actually see a problem that even goes to a scale factor of a two. Okay, so these don't really worry about them. Okay, you can do a lot with the three, four, five because the multiples don't make the numbers very large. Over here, I even think this sort of pushes it. Okay, uh, I'm doubling it, pretty good. I've seen those happen a lot. Uh, tripling, that's eh, a little, uh, little less likely. Wait, there